CRAP test is a tried and true method of evaluating your sources and deciding if they're worthy for you to keep. It's a tool for making informed, measured decisions about which sources get the honor of being included in your project. Let's take a closer look. If you've ever been apple picking, then you know why evaluation matters. Some of the apples aren't any good. Some of them have fallen to the ground and rotted. Some of them have been mostly eaten by insects. Some of them are full of bees. Others, however, are ideal candidates. Experienced apple pickers have a checklist in their minds about what they're looking for. They want an apple that's ideally still on the tree. It's ripened evenly with a bright color all around. It's free of blemishes, dents, and bruises. You might even have some preferences based on your own taste rather than the quality of the apple itself. Maybe you know you want a tart, crispy apple and you don't want a soft, sweet, red delicious even if it's in perfect condition. In other words, you are making evaluations while you're out in the apple field and if you you just go for the first apples that you see, you could end up with a bucket full of rotten mush. If you hand someone a basket that contains rotten apples, it doesn't matter if you have some good apples in there. The rotten ones are going to spoil the gift. That's what they're going to notice. Worse yet, if you leave the rotten apples in there too long, they could cause the good apples to spoil as well. That's what it's like to put a bad source into your paper. Your paper is judged by your weakest source. If you include a source that is untrue, unverified, or poorly written, you are going to make your readers suspicious of your entire paper, even if the rest of the sources are good. It's your job to be careful about which sources you use. They reflect on your thinking and decision-making skills. Evaluating a source isn't always an easy thing to do. Sure, sometimes the source is obviously bad. It's poorly written, it's a blog post full of typos and clip art, the author isn't listed. It's easy to know that you shouldn't use that one. Other times though, the source looks reliable. It's professional in appearance and seems to be written by someone who knows what they're talking about. The CRAP test was created by Sarah Blakesley and a team of librarians at California State University. Their test helps writers determine which sources they should keep and which ones they should toss out. It's not a simple yes or no question though. It's a checklist. Good writers have to weigh each individual piece of the checklist and then make a decision. Does it stay or does it go? CRAP is an acronym that stands for Currency, Relevance, Authority, Accuracy, and Purpose. Let's take a look at each one. First up is C for currency. Currency is how current something is or when it was written. Most sources will have a publication date. Newspaper articles and what most website posts will have a timestamp, usually near the top, with the day and the year they were published. Magazines will usually have a month and year of publication on the front of the issue and sometimes at the bottom of the page of individual articles. Books will have a publication year on the copyright page. The tricky thing about currency is that no one can tell you how old is too old. It depends on your topic. If you're writing about, say, global warming, using data from 1998 to talk about today's issues is not going to be current enough. If you're writing about interpretations of Shakespeare, however, an article from 1998 might be just fine. Some topics require more current information than others. The crap test can't tell you if your article is recent enough to be useful. Only you can decide that, but the C reminds you to look and consider it. Next up is R for relevant. You might find a really cool source about kangaroos, but you're writing a paper on koalas. Even if the source meets all the other items on the checklist, it isn't really relevant to your ideas. Even if it mentions koalas in one sentence, it's not really a relevant source to your purpose. A relevant source is the one that deals with information that is directly and meaningfully related to your topic. Don't settle for less. The first A is for authority. Notice that authority starts with the word author, and that's what you should be looking at here. Who wrote this? Do they have the credentials, experience, and expertise to write on this topic? Again, the crap test can't make that decision for you. Maybe a journalist who has no experience working with koalas can write a very informed piece by interviewing scientists who have. You're deciding that their authority as a journalist is acceptable. It's up to you to make that decision, but the crap test will help you remember to look at the author when choosing which sources to keep. The second A is for accuracy, and this one can be hard to judge. After all, if you knew all the accurate information, you probably wouldn't need to go look up sources in the first place. However, there are some signs you can look for. Things like typos or obviously incorrect dates are a sign that the source hasn't been carefully proofread and might not be accurate. Good sources will also cite 
their sources so you can look up where they found their, the information and how they arrived at their conclusions. Just like your paper is only as good as your weakest source, that's true of your potential sources as well. If they're citing a bunch of poorly written articles from 40 years ago, they're probably not accurate. Toss that apple out. Finally, the P is for purpose. Why was this thing written? Is it in a magazine with the goal of informing people? Or is it an advertisement that's trying to sell you something? Is it an argumentative piece designed to show a particular opinion? Is it a report written by a professional agency? Again, you have to be the one to make the call. Maybe an opinion piece, which likely has some bias, is relevant, written by a credible author, timely, and filled with great sources. That means it's likely a good choice, even if the purpose might give you pause. When you're using the CRAAP test to evaluate your sources, no single element is more important than the others. You have to weigh them all against each other. Chances are that no source is going to be perfect. You'll probably have to make some choices about what is the most important for your particular paper and goals. Remember, part of your job as a writer is to choose sources that have passed your own test. Sometimes you can make a great apple pie with a few bruised apples, but you probably don't want to include rotten ones full of worms. Be picky. There are good sources out there. Find them. <laughs>